Hi everyone and welcome. I am so excited to introduce you to fast, slow cooking using Bible times cooking methods that we use a lot in Eat God's Way. And to get into that, we actually have to address like what kind of a cooker might you use, an appliance that's gonna make all that easier. And for a number of years now, I have been, and I really, really love it. And it does enable us to do fast, slow cooking. So that is the topic for today's video. We're gonna review the different Vitaclay cookers and talk about some features that may factor into you selecting the right one. I do want to let you know at the very beginning though, you do not though, you do not actually have to have one of these because if you have an instant pot, you could make it work. If you have a conventional slow cooker, it'll be slower as we'll discuss, but you can make it work. But if you do want to purchase the one that I'm recommending, it is tradcookschool.com slash Vitaclay, all one word, V-I-T-A-C-L-A-Y. And I have a coupon code for you, WARDY10, all caps and all one word, and that'll help you save. And it does take you directly to the page with the cooker that I recommend. But the point of today's video is actually to show you some of the features and help you decide, do I really want one? Do I need one? Am I going to wait? Am I going to jump right in? So we're going to get into all of that. So first, let me start with telling you a little bit about how I got into cooking with a Vita Clay. I'm using it more and more, and I also use it more and more with what we call Eat God's Way cooking methods from Bible times, such as soaking. So we soak our nuts, we soak our beans, we soak our grains like rice, to make things more nutritious and digestible. And with anything that's cooked, you can combine it with cooking to soak it first and then cook it and you get better texture and you get more nutritious and digestible results. And I have found that the Vita Clay cooker just does things so well and so fast and so conveniently that even though Vita Clay gave me one of these, I think it was like back in 2017-ish, I didn't get it out of the box for a long time. And when I got it out of the box, I wasn't sure what to do with it. So it actually took me quite a while to be like, okay, well, I'll start with some beans. I'll start with some rice. And I began to see how useful, convenient, fast, and great results I got with it. So I began to use it more and more. And so for the past year or more, and at the time I'm recording this, it's 2024. So it's been a number of years. Sometimes it takes me a long time to get into things. I have used it more and more for soups and stews and porridges. And yes, the rice, yes, the beans. It's just become so useful. I use it at least as often, if not more, than the Instant Pot. So I want to introduce you to the Vita Clay today, tell you why it's so great, and help you choose one, because I have multiple models, or help you decide if you need one at all. So that is the point of our video today, and let's hop right in with telling you why I think the Vita Clay is magic. <laughs> Although we don't really believe in magic, but it's like, just why is the Vita Clay so great? So I do have a list of benefits for you, but I do want to say that just going into that, an idea of who might really love the Vita Clay is anybody who likes hands-free cooking. So if you've been the set it and forget it lover of cooking, you've had a slow cooker for years, you might really like the Vita Clay because it can do things faster. If you've been intimidated by pressure cooking because all that pressure, is it safe, whatnot, this could be an easier entry into a multi-function appliance for you. Or if you're good on pressure cooking and you just want faster slow cooking, or if you're just intrigued by another set it and forget it appliance and you just want to see what it could do for you, then you might be interested in the Vita Clay. So what makes the Vita Clay so great? So here's reason number one. So the Vita Clay is depending on the recipe between four and six times faster than your typical slow cooker that we all grew up using. So it has this outer kind of container that insulates more than a slow cooker does. All their cookers seal down, so it builds up a tiny bit of pressure. It's not pressure that you can't open it, but it just builds up a little bit of pressure. So it just retains the heat and that allows it to cook so much faster, which means instead of an eight hour slow cooker recipe, you're doing it in one fifth of the time on average. So you can just get those great slow cooker convenient results that much faster. Now, one downside for those of you who might work outside the home and you actually like putting your ingredients in a conventional slow cooker and they cook all day long and then you come home to it's done, that eight hours being faster doesn't bother you because you're at work anyway, it's cooking along. So maybe that's not a big reason for you. However, if you did switch to a Vita Clay, when the cooking time is done and you program it for however many hours it needs, it reverts to a warm setting. So it can stay warm for the rest of the time till you get home. Now, there is some information out there that suggests maybe you don't want foods on warm for that many hours. And personally, I believe that to be on the safe side, you're probably looking at no more than two hours on warm. Now, I could be convinced otherwise, but that's just the information that I've followed for a number of years. So again, if you work outside the home, the Vita Clay might not be the best option for you in terms of that. Reason number two, it retains heat better than your typical slow cooker. So like I said, this seals up 
There is no heat loss here. And even with the multi-crock, which we'll discuss, there are silicone plugs, so there is no venting going on, and it also seals up very well. So that's how you can have retained heat. And that does equate to a better texture in your foods in terms of very moist and tender. And it also means that your cooking time is faster. So there's a great benefit to retaining that heat instead of losing it to the air constantly like a typical slow cooker does. Now, number three, this is something that really bugs people about pressure cookers like the Instant Pot. And I can agree, I guess, because when you're doing an Instant Pot or a pressure cooker and you set the cooking cycle for like 15 minutes, well, it has so much time that has to come up to pressure and once it's starting to build pressure and during that cooking time and then when it's coming down from the cooking time and releasing pressure you cannot open it <laughs> and it's not see-through so you're like what is going on in there my meat tender is my rice done what's going on so with this the vita clay you can open these during cooking and as i said it will build up a tiny amount of pressure just to retain the heat but it's not like exploding pressure it's just like a kind of thing. So you can open it, you can take the lid off, you can stir, you can see what's going on in there, check tenderness, whatever. It's not closed off from you anytime, which is a great, great benefit. So you can actually get in here. And so I just contrasted it with the Instant Pot pressure cooker showing that when it's under pressure, you cannot get into it. Now with a conventional slow cooker, you can actually get into it. But the downside is that doesn't retain heat as well. So you are just losing a ton of heat and it just extends the cooking time so much more. So with the Vita Clay, you can get in and out of it. There's no significant downsides. It's not going to extend your cooking time significantly. It's going to ensure a better result because you can see what's going on. Having said that, there are certain types of recipes which we will get into in this class where I advise you don't get in and out of it often, like porridges for instance. It's not that it would be ruined, but it's that your grains are going to absorb a certain amount of moisture and you can ensure a better result like too much liquid being left over so it's not under or over and you can ensure kind of a perfect result if you don't get into it on those. You can, but if you could just not, you'll get a better result. So hopefully that makes sense. Number four, this is in contrast to a pressure cooker. You don't have to wait for pressure changes. There's no extra time at the beginning to come up to pressure before it starts the cook time. There's no extra time at the end where it's coming down and you have to wait for that. You basically are going to set your two hours or three hours or 30 minutes or whatever, and it's going to be coming up to eat and starting cooking and all of it counts. So there's just not that extra time. Now, having said that, we all know that a pressure cooker is actually faster in many cases when things are all told, but that extra pressure time, I think is just a mental hurdle for people because it's a recipe and it's like, oh, pressure cook in 15 minutes. Yeah, but you have to account 15 minutes coming up to pressure and releasing pressure. So it's not really 15 minutes. Whereas in a Vita Clay, the time is the time in most cases, unless it wasn't done yet and you had to add more. So hopefully that makes sense. And I just think mentally that feels better for a lot of us that we're not waiting on pressure changes. Number five. It's hands-free cooking. An Instant Pot is hands-free. A conventional crock pot is hands-free. Well, this is as well. So if you are a person who loves hands-free cooking and loves cookers with multiple functions, very versatile, this is gonna be another one that just fits that bill that I feel like pretty much anybody could make use of it in their home just because it has that convenience factor. Number six, and this is exciting and I think really not many things can compare to this, and it is the unglazed clay cooking pots. So in the multi-cooker and the multi-crock, we'll talk about the differences, they both are this unglazed clay and it's lead-free, it's contaminant-free. So like this is the lid, here's the cooking pot. And I've used this dozens, if not hundreds of times. It comes right clean and it is unglazed, toxin-free clay. In Eat God's Way, as you know, we place a high priority on using toxin-free cooking containers. So we're prioritizing things like stainless steel, clear glass, unglazed ceramic. I don't know if there's unglazed ceramic, but there's certainly unglazed clay. So we're talking about no coatings, <laughs> no glazing, because often like the lead and the other contaminants are in the coatings. So this is not only toxin-free clay, it's not coated in any way with anything that would have lead or other things. Now, when you compare it to stainless steel, for instance, stainless steel is generally regarded as safe and I would regard it as safe. However, it is minimally reactive with longer cooking times and or using acidic ingredients and clay does not have that downside. So with the clay cooker insert pots in these units, 
you can just have complete confidence that you're not getting any toxins, heavy metals, um, et cetera, in your cooking. So you're just not getting contaminants in your food. And that's very important to us because I think all of us are looking more and more at all these toxins that we're dealing with in the environment. And we just don't need lead or copper or things getting into our food and consuming them when we're really trying to get them out of our bodies. Now, some models of the Vitaclay have a stoneware. So they have a multi-crock with a stoneware. And honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So I'm just gonna say that for me, the jury is a little bit out on that. I have complete confidence in the unglazed clay. So that's why I feature these machines in this video. It's either the multi-cooker with the unglazed clay insert or it's the multi-crock with the unglazed clay, I think are the safest options at this time. Whether or not stoneware is up there, I just don't know yet. Number seven, moist. So you have moist, moist, moist results, lots of flavor, heat's not escaping, moisture's not escaping. You have the benefits of slow cooking, but it's done fast to make your meats tender, your grains turn out great, your porridge turns out great. The results are so good in terms of moisture and flavor. And we are talking wet cooking here. You can't do any dry cooking in here. Like you're not gonna roast a chicken or something like that. So everything's going to be in water or broth, liquids, and you're just gonna get really moist and flavorful results. And finally, number eight, versatility. So like I just said, you can't do dry dishes. You can't do dry dishes in an Instant Pot either, but you have such versatility. And depending on the machine, you have all these different functions and you can make all different kinds of things. So soups and stews, porridges, cooked grains, cooked beans, yogurt, steamed vegetables or steamed meats. You just have tons of options for what you can do with these cookers. They're portable, so you can take them with you. The versatility and the portability is just really great. So those are off the top of my head or when I was brainstorming, those are what I would say the magic of the Vita Clay, some of which can be found with other multi-purpose appliances, but some of which are unique to the Vita Clay. So overall, I think it's a really great appliance to add to your kitchens. And if you come up with other benefits, I would love to hear from you. So just post in our private group and let me know if you come up with anything else. So Holly, what questions do we have? The first one is from Anonymous. It's actually my question too. How easily do they break? So if you drop it, will it break? Yes. So like your stoneware and your glass and your ceramic, clay breaks if you drop it. <laughs> Personally, I don't think it's any more risky than other breakable things that we use in our kitchens. Like I told you, I got our first one in 2017. And even though I've used it a ton in the last year plus, I have used it all that time. I've never had a crack or a break. And I basically treat it the way I treat glass or stoneware or anything else breakable in our kitchen. So yes, they break. Do they break more easily? Not in my experience. So you're just gonna have to employ the same kind of caution you do with other breakable things. I forgot to tell you this, but I like it so much, I got an extra clay insert because I'm constantly using it. So just like many of us have extra insert pots for the Instant Pot, you can do extra clay pots for this. And if you did happen to break one and you had the extra, then you've got one to use, or you could purchase one because they do sell them separately. So great question. And I would just say, employ your regular caution. Gina is asking about, does the unglazed clay retain flavors? If you're thinking about something savory like oatmeal, do you have to be careful about that? Yes, you do. That is one of the reasons that I got an extra insert pot is so I could have one devoted to savory and one to just like mild. Having said that, once I made a tomato-based soup and then I made oatmeal in it, this was my first like, oh no, I shouldn't have done that <laughs> because the oatmeal did have tomato flavor in it. And then I was like, oh, well, I'm glad I got this extra pot. So now this one that had the tomato in it is gonna be my savory pot. And then this one will be for mild or sweet things. Having said that, over time, the savory pot, and I would say just with cooking mild things in it, it actually lost all that tomato flavor. And so now all of my pots are mild. So the answer is, Yes, but in my experience, it doesn't last. And probably if you did like vinegar soak or other cleaning things, which we will go over later on in this class, that you could probably minimize that. Jody is asking, do you make yogurt with raw milk and the Vita clay? Will it get too hot to kill the probiotics? Can you control the temperature like you do with the Instant Pot set? You can make yogurt in this and it doesn't kill the probiotics. It is a low enough temperature and we will have a yogurt lesson in this class. So that is coming. All right, so the next part of our video is where I'm gonna help you choose your Vita Clay model. Now this is if you're ready to buy or you're thinking, 
this is sounding good, I wonder which one I would choose, but please know if you're following along in our fast slow cooking class, you don't have to buy the Vitaclay. You know, our recipes are gonna use it, but you can continue using your conventional slow cooker for a while. You can modify to pressure cooker. You can use your stovetop, okay? But if you're thinking along the lines of, ah, this sounds intriguing, let's talk about the Vitaclay models and which might work best for you. And this is not an answer where I can absolutely say everybody should buy this one. And that's why I wanna go through some things with you. I also want to say that if you will go on the Vitaclay website, which by the way is tradcookschool.com slash Vitaclay, all one word, V-I-T-A-C-L-A-Y, they have diagrams and charts that show you all the different features. And I think we could get lost in the weeds comparing little tiny minutia of details. And my goal here is not to reproduce that. My goal here is to kind of give you a big picture on deal breakers, because I think most things you could achieve in most of their cookers. Now, there are some exceptions which we'll go over, and probably most people would be happy with most of their cookers. But I want to hit on the big things that I think are gonna make your buying decision sway pretty clearly one way or the other, not getting into the minutia of the details. All right, so just wanted to set that up front because you can explore that yourself if you wanna know a lot more details. So let me just give you a kind of tour of the two machines that I think are the ones that I will focus on, even though they do have some others. This is the Vitaclay multi-cooker, and this is the Vitaclay multi-crock or multi-stock pot, okay? They have similar functions. There's a lot of overlap in functions, but there are some differences, which I'll go into when they're deal breakers. Both of them have the unglazed ceramic pots, which are removable in both, and both of them are circular. The pots themselves are circular. The insulated cooker unit itself on the multi-cooker is oval shape, it's also shorter, <laughs> whereas the multi-crock is pretty much entirely circular and it's taller. And I think the difference, if I would estimate it, is like two or three inches. So that might be something you wanna consider, like is it gonna fit under your countertop? Depending on how low your cupboards are, would this taller one fit? So refer to the website for the actual specs for that. I can fit both of them under. And the other thing to keep in mind is this one opens. So if you open it, is it gonna fit under your counter? And I just wanna show you how it goes on mine. There is also a handle, as you can see on the multi-cooker, like a lift up handle, whereas the crock has two side handles. Okay, so moving this over, so you can see it goes under the counter like that, and this comes up and it can pretty much open fully. Now, my issue is that if I bring it forward, I actually have a light back here that prevents it from coming up fully. So I have to bring it forward if I want the lid to come up all the way. And then it just hits the edge of this. So mostly what I do is I either leave it under there and open it, and it's okay with me if it rests on the housing for the light, or else I bring it out all the way. And then it can rest on the bottom of the cupboards, but I think that repetitive of this will actually chip away at the paint over time, especially if this is retaining any kind of warmth, which it's not hot when it's on. This is not hot, you can touch this, but I don't like to rest it on this because I don't want to degrade the paint on the cabinets. So what I do is this. So things to keep in mind there, and of course it's portable, just like this one is portable. And then to give you an idea of how this one looks under the counter, you can see that easily fits under the counter. There's plenty of room here for me to take the lid off and go like that, pull it out. I suppose if you lift it up a lot, you're banging, but if you're careful, there's plenty of room. there. I forgot to mention, so I'll mention now. So they have the multi-cooker, they have the multi-crock, multi-stock pot. They also have a dedicated rice cooker, I'm not covering that at all because you can do rice in both of these and these are more versatile. So unless you only want to do rice, just go get that one. <laughs> I don't think it's worth mentioning or going into. Now you can see in terms of shape and size, what might sway your buying decision. And now I wanna go into the functionality of these. So they have similar functions. You can accomplish similar things with these with a few exceptions, which we'll go into. But the major things you can do is broth and soup and porridge and grains. And there's a keep warm function. There's even delay timer on both of these. So you can pretty much accomplish most of your cooking with both. But as I said, we're gonna go into the functions that could sway your buying decision one way or the other. So let me cover them now. And there's not a ton, there's just a few. I don't wanna go into the minutia, like I said. I just pulled out the major things that I think will influence your cooking. The multi-cooker offers cooking times in 10 minute increments. So like if you want to do steel cut oats or rolled oats or meats that are timed down to the 10 minutes, you can do that. This one you do 30 minute increments. So you do have more precision with the multi-cooker than the multi-crock. 
Now, I don't think that's a total deal breaker because as we've talked about before, you can get into this. You could turn it off prematurely. You can turn it on for 30 more minutes, but know that you're gonna stop it in 10 or 15. So it's more the convenience of you've got a recipe down pat. You know it takes 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 40 minutes, and you can just time this and it's gonna revert to warm and it's gonna be done every single time and you don't have to prematurely stop it because it's still cooking hot and you don't want to burn or overcook. You you can accomplish the same kind of cooking times on both, but this one is far more convenient. The multi-cooker wins in that case. I mentioned delay timer, and they both do have a delay timer. However, the multi-cooker has a delay timer across the board, so pretty much all the functions. The multi-crock, you can only do the delay function on the porridge setting. The rest of them, you're manually starting, but you can't like set it to start in four hours or something. Whereas pretty much across the board on this one, you can. And I do use this all the time with rice, with our oatmeal, with beans. I just use that delay timer. I use it across the board and I really, really love it. I think it's a great, great feature. So anyway, this one has that. I think you can tell so far the multi-cooker has won in two things <laughs> with the 10 minute increments and the delay timer across the board. But now we're gonna shift over to the multi-crock and that's in volume or capacity. The multi-cooker can only go up to four quarts. They offer it in a three or four quart size. This is the four quart, and then you can't get it any bigger currently. Whereas the multi-crock goes up to six quart, which most of us have the instant pot that's a six quart, and you know how great that is. So if you have a larger family and just do larger batches of things, the multi-crock wins. And the final big difference functionally is the rice cooking settings. So the multi-cooker has rice cooking settings, both for regular rice and brown rice. The multi-crock does not have a rice setting. Having said that, you can still use the porridge setting to cook your rice. So while it doesn't have the exact setting, you can still cook your rice in it. So we had four major differences there. Cooking time increments, more precise. Delay timer across the board. Limited delay timer on the multi-crock. Larger capacity on the multi-crock. And rice cooking setting on the multi-cooker. So the multi-cooker wins in three out of four but they're not all necessarily deal breakers because as I've explained, you can kind of get around some of them. So it's just up to you to make the decision. And I'll tell you my decision and what I recommend is the multi-cooker. If you could only get one, which I'm gonna say, just only get one if you're gonna get one. <laughs> Vita Clay provided this for me. Thank you to them for demonstration purposes. Otherwise, I couldn't have made this demonstration so clear. I'm just beginning to use it. I do think it's going to be very useful, but if I could only get one, if I only had one, it would be the multi-cooker, and that's the one that I have used for multiple years now. And the reason being is that I really use the 10-minute increment timer. I also really use the rice cooker function, and I also use the delay timer across the board on all the functions. So in the three ways that this is superior, for me, they are very important to me. So hopefully that helps you if you're wondering which one to get. And of course, you can refer to the VitaClay website to their different charts and features if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of the details. So I keep pointing to this one. This is the VM7900-8, I believe. That's the four quart size of the multi-cooker. And if you use my link, tradcookschool.com slash VitaClay, all one word, it takes you right to the page with this cooker. Now, if you want to shop around, just click around. But if you are ready to get the one that I recommend, this is the one I recommend for most everybody. You can make a different decision, but for the reasons that I've said, I think it's going to be the best for everybody, especially if you do our kind of cooking. So anyway, the link will take you right to this one and choose the four quart capacity, not the three quart capacity, and use the coupon code WARDE10, all one word and all caps, W-A-R-D-E-E-10 -E -E to save. What questions do we have for this so far? You mentioned that they're portable, which is awesome, but how portable do you think they would be? Like, could you put this in your car and take it somewhere without filling the content to the base? Yes, you absolutely can. I do think that this one's least likely to spill and it has the case and the handle, so you pretty much just move it. This one, when I transfer anything, whether it's an Instant Pot or a conventional crock pot or these, I still put them on a baking tray or in a box and I line it with towels in case there is spill. And I also try to take less liquidy things. So like if it was a soup, I would do a stew <laughs> that's thicker with less moisture. If you're used to transporting your crock pot or your Instant Pot, I would just do it the same way you do that, which is take precautions for spills so that you don't make them mess of your car or truck. And then another question is how heavy is the clay pot insert if you could guess? 
I mean, it's kind of heavy like your stoneware is heavy or a glass bowl is heavy compared to a plastic bowl. This one is heavier, but it's also larger. They aren't light. It's like cooking with stoneware and then the bigger it is, the heavier. Yeah, and then there are questions about, like you did put it under the cabinet and you showed us how that worked. What about steam during cooking under the cabinets? Is that an issue? There is a small amount of steam that comes out, but mostly they are sealed up and you don't have to worry about steam other than when you open it. If that concerns you, you would want to pull it out while it's cooking and or opening and closing it. I actually haven't had any issues with the small amount of steam. But yeah, there is steam, just like with anything, there is some steam, but these cookers do keep it contained. And then the issue is when you open it. And then the last question for this round is from Lynn, and she's asking about cooking with fats and oils that in some other clay pots and restaurants, they use those to cook the bread and the pots get rancid from that. So is fats and oils a problem for this dish? No, fats and oils are not a problem. I haven't done recipes with lots of fats and oils. I'm basically done recipes where it's the fat that's in the meat, for instance, and I've had no problem with that. And I do think when you're cleaning it, that is one time you would want to use soap just to get any of that residue off. Okay, and you mentioned that the sizes were four quart and six quart. And so once again, four, the six, six. Quart, the largest that they have, they do not carry eight quart. Correct. At this time, the six quart is the largest on the multi crock, and the four quart is the largest on the multi cooker. Okay, and that is all the questions. Let's for. Okay, great. So the last thing we want to cover is the Vita Clay versus the Instant Pot. So you might have an Instant Pot, or you might have neither an Instant Pot nor a Vita Clay, and you're wondering if I could only get one. <laughs> Which one should I get? So here is how I would break it down. I think that the Instant Pot wins in terms of being the fastest overall cooking time, as well as the models giving you a larger capacity. So pressure cooking is pretty much always gonna be faster. Even factoring in the come to pressure time and reduce pressure time, it's still overall going to be faster than fast slow cooking in a Vita Clay. If you need the absolute fastest and you're comfortable with pressure cooking, okay with not being able to get in and out of it, it's gonna win for you in terms of overall cooking time. Plus, as we know, the Instant Pot models go up to 10 quart, I believe, unless they've gone even bigger. <laughs> but you can get six, eight, 10 quart Instant Pots. So capacity and time is a win there. I think that the Vita Clay multi-cooker wins in terms of ease of use. So you can get in and out, check what's going on, adjust, etc. So you're not locked out of it. Plus you have all the convenient things of programmable, timing, delay, etc. Oh, and also it wins in terms of being a fast slow cooker because, just to be honest, even though the Instant Pot has a slow cook function, it's not as good as this slow cook function on a conventional slow cooker or the Vita Clay slow cooker. So the Vita Clay slow cooker is just faster, as we've talked about, around five times faster than your conventional one. And the Instant Pot slow cook function is not as good as your conventional slow cooker, in my opinion, because I don't think that it gets as hot or retains the heat the way a conventional slow cooker does. The Vita Clay is just leaps and bounds above both of them. If you're cooking certain foods like rice and porridge type cereals, I think that the results are better in the Vita Clay in terms of the chewiness and how cooked they get and the consistency. So I just think the results turn out better than pressure cooking. Rice for sure. I've worked with a lot of people who've been like, I just don't like rice in my Instant Pot. Well, the rice in the Vita Clay cooker is just amazing. <laughs> So it wins there. That's how I break it down in terms of comparison. The Instant Pot wins hands down on speed and capacity. The Vita Clay is a better slow cooker. It also can turn out better results with certain grain-based foods like rice and porridges. I think the results are better. So hopefully that makes you choose. I do think whatever you choose, you're probably going to be happy because both the Instant Pot and the Vita Clay, and even if you chose the multi-crock on the Vita Clay, like you can do so much with all these machines. If I had to pick my favorite of all three today, and as we all know, we grow and change and whatnot, we have things that excite us differently, but I do think I'm getting to the point now where I use the multi-cooker more than the Instant Pot. So I feel like for me, it's got an edge over the Instant Pot for all the reasons that I said. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful to those of you who've been wondering, should I get one? Is it worth it? Do we have any questions about that? So you mentioned that it cooks rice so much better than like the Instant Pot does. Sherry's wanting to know about beans. Do beans cook even better in the Vita Clay? 
No, I think the Instant Pot and the Vita Clay do beans very well, both of them. Sometimes people have trouble with beans in the Instant Pot because you can't get inside and see, are they done yet or are they overdone? Whereas you can check that kind of thing with the Vita Clay. So in terms of being able to assess, the Vita Clay wins. But if you had your method and your bean and everything and timing down pat, the results are similar. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, and then Nancy's asking about which would be better for yogurt making, the Vita Clay or the Instant Pot? Yeah, that's actually a good concern. So both do yogurt very, very well. But like I said, with the Instant Pot, the capacity is better. So you can actually make more yogurt in the Instant Pot because of its capacity. But both of them do a great job with making yogurt. We have someone asking, could you fit a whole chicken in the multi-cooker? No, this is the capacity difference between the two. The four quart multi-cooker is not going to fit a whole chicken unless it's a very tiny one. So I do chicken parts in here, whereas you can fit a whole chicken in the multi-crock. That's where if you have a large family or you're doing large amounts of food, such as a chicken, the multi-crock is going to be a better fit overall because of its capacity. And the last question I see is, can you tell us again what the white dots on the lid are? Yeah, great question. These are venting. There's four venting holes and these are silicone plugs and you can take these out and wash them if you need to, but you keep these in and this is part of how the Vita Clay retains its heat and doesn't lose moisture and doesn't lose heat and builds up just that little poof of pressure that keeps everything cooking fast. <laughs> and that are all the questions for now. Okay, great. I want to finish out this video by sharing some bigger thoughts about appliances and bringing things into our home. I think it can be tempting when we find a new appliance to be like, oh, it can do this, 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 this. I'm going to do everything with it. <laughs> and while it can do everything with it, and some of these appliances say like 15 and one, seven and one, practically speaking, we all have our different preferences for the way we like to cook things. And those tried and true methods don't necessarily have to change. It doesn't mean you can't experiment, but I think you're still going to have your favorite recipes that you do in the oven, favorite recipes you do in the stovetop, favorite things you do in a Vita Clay, favorite things you do in an Instant Pot. And a new appliance, I don't think we should have the expectation that it's going to replace everything. Now, in situations like when you're sending someone off to college or you're like in a studio apartment with no kitchen, you perhaps do want to look for the most versatile appliance that you can do the most with because you don't have access to all those things. So I'm not minimizing that, but I'm saying if you're in a normal functioning kitchen, not to have an expectation that an appliance is going to be the end all be all. And don't pressure yourself to be like, to make it worth it, I have to figure out how to make my bread and my soap and everything in it. No, you don't. Just find the ways where it makes your life easier, it makes your results better, and really rest in those and celebrate those, but don't feel like you have to replace everything. I haven't replaced everything. I still use the Instant Pot, I still use the stove, I still use the oven, I still use the toaster oven. I definitely use the Vita Clay, but it's to become a tool in the kitchen to help me find my way. And that's what I would hope for you. And maybe you don't need to hear that, but I do think some of us do need to hear that, just like a dose of realism in terms of not expecting too much and also not feeling guilty for, no, I don't wanna change how I do that. Like my roast chicken turns out great. I've got it down pat. I'm not changing that. That is totally, totally fine. And if you've watched all this and you still feel like, I'm not sure if the Vita Clay will change my mind or I'm not sure if the Vita Clay will change my life, that is fine too. I don't want anybody to run out and buy something that you're not ready to buy. I want you to buy it if you're excited about it, you see the possibility and you think that it could change your life in just one way. I think it would be a worthwhile investment, but if you're not sure, wait. And if you are one of our Eat God's Way students and you're not sure, but you're following along in the fast slow cooking class, just watch me do the recipes, try them in your regular slow cooker, try them in your Instant Pot, try them on the stovetop, and just see how the class pans out before you decide to invest so you can really make sure you want it and really make sure that it's going to change your life. Because again, I don't want to pressure anybody. Now, if you're not an Eat God's Way student and you're interested in fast cooking or any of our Eat God's Way cooking methods where we use cooking methods from Bible times that not only feature whole foods, ancient grains, Bible times cooking methods that make your results, more nutritious than digestible, save you money, save you time, then reach out by text or email to let us know kind of what you're looking for, what you're struggling with, and we will give you information on our current classes that we offer. 
as well as available enrollment dates. And there's no pressure. We'll just chat and see how we might be able to help you. So again, just email or text, and we'll be happy to share that information with you. Now, I'll just leave you with the VitaClay link one more time. If you are ready to jump into it, it's tradcookschool.com slash VitaClay, V-I-T-A-C-L-A-Y, all one word, and use coupon code WARDY10, all caps, all one word, W-A-R-D-E-E-1-0, -E -E to save. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I look forward to hearing from you in our private group and or if you have any questions or comments and how your Vita Clay journey goes, we'd love to hear from you. God bless you. Bye-bye.